Hello, this is Soaring Moon with the seventh devlog video for Kijimin Windborn Kin. We're starting out with a black screen here because we have a new splash screen for the game. So when you first launch the game, see here real quick. There we go. Try that one more time. All right, there we go. You'll see that there is an epilepsy warning. And then it goes into the company logo. Has a little animation for that. Nice. And goes into the main menu of the game. So the main menu has uh, buttons. Uh, most of them aren't functional, but we have new game and load game, which do work. So I'm going to let this play until the animation switches over to night. You'll see that the logo over here starts to glow. So this is this bottom part. Pretty proud of that one. It look, I think it looks great. But we can go over to load game, and it shows that we have save file slots. And I've gone ahead and populated all these slots um, for to show you how uh, the save file management works. You see, I can click on a save file, and it gives me the information for that save file. Uh, there's some placeholder text here for when we add uh, quest descriptions in the future. But I can delete files from here. In order to delete a file, you do have to click it, click it 10 times. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. And the file's deleted. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one as well. And I'll delete one a little higher up. And you'll see that there's a uh, button here that says duplicate file. So we have an empty save slot here if I duplicate the file. Uh, the save file will go down into this into this file here. So if I delete this file again, come up here to save file one, which is actually different. Then we duplicate that file. We go back down to save file 13. It will be duplicated. So make copies of your save files for backup. Go back to the main menu. Go to new game, start a new game from here. You'll see that we have a uh, character creation menu. Let's go ahead and close out of the game to reopen it. You can of course skip the, uh, the splash. I'm going to go to load game. I'm going to load the first save file. And here we are, the um, overworld as you know it before. Now we have some new uh, stuff in the game. Uh, this is going to get a little complicated, so I'm going to go over to the city over here. So while I'm flying over to the city, I'll show you that we have here in the loadout menu um, if I go to mod modify loadout, it says you must be a port, a port city with an Arowina to change fixtures. So if I go into equipped fixtures, I can no longer modify them. So I do have to go back to the overworld and then get near a city to change those fixtures. So I'm coming over here to Evel and we will try to change our fixtures. So I'm now parked at Evel. I'm going to go ahead and press L to open my loadout menu. So we're going to go back to modify loadout and it says we got different text here. It says you are dark docked at a port city, but it doesn't have an arrowina. You cannot change fixtures here. So if I go here, I can't change the fixtures. And in fact, whenever I go into the city, because you can do that now, you'll see that uh, there are some options trade with port, job notices, bank, find passengers, gather information, depart from port. We're going to depart. I'm just showing you there's no Aeroina here. So we're going to go fly back to Aerodana. 
and do that as quickly as I can with my ship speed. I'm gonna go ahead and fly to Ardana. Our Ardana, Ardana. I'm gonna go in here, and you'll see that there is an Arowina in the city. I'm gonna depart from it. I'm gonna go ahead and open my loadout menu again. And we'll see that says, you are docked at a port city with an Arowina. You can change fixtures here. So I can go ahead and unequip and, and equip items here. So that's that's new. Um, also new to the game is a very robust trading system. Um, this is what I've been working on for most of the time. I'm, the splash screen was about half the week. And then uh, the other half of the week was doing this um, trading system. So. Um, I'm actually going to show you the inventory. The inventory has changed. Uh, items now have rarities in all menus, and the tooltips now function in all those menus as well. Um, we have Unix of Cargo, 92. Cargo matters now. Uh, if you are over-encumbered, the game will force you to open your inventory and remove items. So that's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and go into the city and go into the trade with port menu. So uh, we see a, a rather complicated menu with two sides of two different scroll bars. It's a pain to get that working, but it does. So we have uh, all of our inventory from the previous page and with prices that you can see here, uh, a certain amount of currency that we have, in-game currency. Um, this shouldn't be scrolling up, actually, if I'm uh, over here. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a mistake. I need to fix that. It's probably a little far to the... Uh, to the left that's easy to fix it's no big deal but um yeah we have a uh, equipment over here and uh it appears that the prices here are quite low um as a uh as the person who wrote the software i know the price of this is usually quite high prices are randomly uh, not randomly generated they're they're dependent on the day of the week the month of the year uh, the city's current status uh, in in a trade algorithm, it, it's really complicated in the background. All you need to know is that these prices fluctuate over time, and they do cyclically, so they are in a predict predictable way, so that the player can uh, make profitable trades over the course of the year. Anyway, uh, we have items over here that we can sell. I'm gonna go ahead and sell some of the more expensive items like uh, these very pulsing rat lines. We're gonna have, go ahead and put those in the track center tra transaction. You'll see that it has a, an estimated uh, size. Um, this is only an estimate because of the way that the cargo capacity is calculated for items with subunits like cannonballs. If I add that, you see that the transaction doesn't, size doesn't change, but this is gonna say 80 when I click transact. And um, that's because it's really hard to uh, to calculate that in the background. But um, you know, there's a lot of handling. Uh, we we fix that. It's not a big it's not a big deal. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and sell all of my goods just for uh, uh, showing off the buying and trading system. We're gonna see how much uh, profit we can make here. Looks like we made about 500k. So if I click transact, you see I have 700k total and no large equipment. So I can come over here and buy some large equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the red Jimin engine a couple times. So we bought, uh, looks like 10 of those. When I click transact, they get added, added to my inventory. Go back and depart from the port. Um, I had about 700k uh, whenever I started buying those engines. So I'm gonna come over here and go to Evil and sell them. So we will go to go to Evel because Evel uh, really needs those engines, and I know that because I programmed the uh, the whole uh, market system. But you see that uh, Evel uh, doesn't have any any engines in their uh, large equipment pool, so they're willing to pay more for them. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and sell uh, all of these and make 900k. So. I made about 200 and something K profit off that. And I can go back, depart from the port, and I'm gonna go ahead and fly back to Aerodana. And you see it's night. Um, the game now remembers the uh, time of day and the passage of the year. It used to not save that information, and it does now. 
So we're going to get there just after the day-night terminator. And you can go back to Aerodana, trade with the port, and you'll see that their price is now 90k. Um, because uh, we we made those um, uh, those gemmins a little more common. But uh, I'm going to buy, uh, let's see here. I'm going to buy these again. We're going to buy some more of them. I'm going to buy nine. Oops, I did not click transacts. Okay, uh, so I bought ten. Depart from the port. We're going to go to a different city. See if they have any better prices. So I bought those for like 92k. We'll see if we can sell them at a profit over here at Fish Whip. So I'm going to go to Fish Whip. And you see that they're buying them for 127k. And there we go. 1.2 mil. Transact. Made a profit. So that is the game in its current state. Uh, players can now buy and sell trade trade uh, stuff. They can uh, create multiple save files. They can duplicate those save files and delete them. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this mercantile bit uh, is one of the hardest parts of the game to program. Uh, so I figured I'd do that first. The next part of the game that actually gets developed is the event handling system. So once event handling is done, this will be a uh, a much more playable video game. Currently, it's 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 playable. You can make pro profitable trades. It actually has gameplay now. There are actually things you can do. Um, man, they don't have engines at all, and they're uh, selling these hidden compartments quite cheaply. Uh, so I mean, we could buy some of those, but uh, the cargo capacity is. Uh, I have a cheated ship here. So the cheated ship has a lot of cargo capacity. Um, if you over encumber yourself by stuff that you purchase, when you go back to this menu, you get a, a, a flashing warning here telling you that you're over encumbered. And if you don't sell the stuff, you'll have to uh, get rid of it when you, um, when you leave the city. If you depart from the city, you'll automatically open your inventory for you and force you to remove it. So that's funny. Oh, we we can use that uh, to mess with uh, the player and make sure that they're not trying to uh, circumvent our our restrictions. The there is a state where you can go through character creation and get an inventory state which is over encumbered. And the, after immediately after exiting character creation and entering the overworld, it will force you to remove those items. <laughs> So um, there is a combination of things that will allow you to choose as many gliders as you want. So you can add, you know, 10,000 gliders to your inventory because they're all free. But the second you exit character creation, it forces you to remove them. <laughs> so uh, I, find that, I find that pretty funny. Um, so, yep, uh, go into Alostrum, see that they have uh, even different uh, equipment. So the uh, equipment available... Uh, is the same for every city i do i i'm not sure if it cycles i don't think it cycles i can make it cycle if i want to um but uh i don't think in the current state it cycles so the the cities have the same inventory each time so it's predictable but i could change our inventory if i wanted to uh, the uh, the generator is that robust the there are 261 cities in this game. All of them have their own inventory, own pricing, own schedules for their pricing. Uh, you know, corner case stuff like um, I actually didn't get time to uh, put that in because uh, Starfield's releasing today. I really want to play that. But for example, um, since Poco Palms are grown in Pocoto, uh, Pocoto City should have them all the time. I haven't gone through and done that, but it's pretty easy to do. I just haven't got around to it yet. And you'll see that um, Poco Palms have a, a value of zero. If I buy one Poco Palm and transact here, I get one Poco Palm uh, uh, back. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the save file a little bit. So um, off camera, I am 
I'm going to modify that save file. So I'm opening up a local app data and opening up the save file. And I'm going to change the Poco Palm bonus flag to one. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to relaunch the game. Skip through all the splash stuff. Load the game again. I'm back here at Alostrum. And if I go to trade with the port, they have Poco Palm. I have four from the previous cell I made. Uh, this, this game sa auto saves very frequently. So, so I'm going to go ahead and add one and transact. You'll see that I have seven instead of one. So if I buy three, I'll get way more. Um, that's because uh, I turned on the flag that during character creation, if you buy Poco Palm from any vendor, it'll triple the amount that you get instead. So that's a character creation um, selection option. So that's, I believe it's a, um, a, back, uh, a starting city choice or a background choice. I can't remember. Point is, uh, you get bonus Pokepon. There's one for alcohol and one for um, Pocotanese as well. Uh, and you'll see that those are valued at zero so that a player can't buy one for one transact and then sell three for, for one each. Uh, so they are valued at zero. So that prevents a duplication exploit. But, yeah, that is the game in its current state. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this rather long devlog video uh, going over the new stuff. Oh, uh, something I didn't mention, is the background visuals changed as well. The, uh, you'll see that there's a uh, starry sky pattern and the, and the uh, terrain, uh, what was previously just blue, is now uh, transparent and there's clouds in the background. So I added some... Uh, parallax clouds in the background of the game to add some more visual interest so it does look better i think but yeah uh, those are all the updates <laughs> for the game the next uh devlog video should be available uh on the 19th of september around there hovering uh, plus or minus two days and we should have the event system uh set up so the game will actually have events and gameplay and uh, things will occur and players will have actions to perform and people to talk to and well not people to talk to not yet. that's gonna be probably a month or two before we get uh, um, dialogue and I think we have to do combat first or, or part of combat before we can get dialogue in well, yeah, um, you know, I said goodbye a couple times. This, this one is actually goodbye. Okay, thanks, bye.